button me here for not being so clear. So we are talking about rigid joint. We are talking about pin joint. So what are those? Okay. So while we express these structures like this, we idealize these structures like this, right? But if it is a rigid joint, it will be like this in reality. The rigid joints, the beams and columns that we see in our RCC building, those are supposed to be rigid joints. But there are some factors involved, like we are studying about reinforcement. We knew that reinforcements are to be provided in the beams and columns and slabs, etc. So those reinforcements are provided partly or not. Those reinforcements, uh, does those reinforcement have proper encoders or not okay these kind of things like encoders means one reinforcement coming from the beam and going into the column and it must have certain length so that there is prevention of slippage or rotation by the bonding friction etc between the reinforcement and the country okay so those kind of things will be involved Okay. So then only it will be rigid joint. So theoretically, when it is a rigid joint, there will be no displacement, there will be no rotation. But in reality, we do not get perfectly rigid joint. We get near rigid joint, near perfect, or we can call semi-rigid joint in reality. But in theoretical concept, the rigid joint will be where there are no deflection where there are no we see in the truss system one member is coming and there is a pin joint and this joint is not transferring moment okay this joint is capable of transferring only axial forces and that is the reason why in truss system we do not see moment because the joints are pin joint they are not capable of generating moment, transferring moment, etc. Uh, so we have to remember that that is very important. Now, we want to go a little bit more. We have already done for truss, how to do it. For 2D system and 3D system, we have also done for simple beams. But if we have a frame and it goes on getting complicated, what to do? So this is a shortcut type of thing. So suppose we have a ring like here shown. If we make cuts at the ring, okay. So we have this ring, we are making a cut here we are making a cut here. So whenever we will make a cut, what will happen? Three forces will be released. One is axial force, one is shear force, and one is moment. Three forces will be released. If it is a uh, structural system and we are making cuts. So if we want to analyze this system, then the concept is that we have to make at least two cuts okay then only it will be separated from one another right and here at one cut there will be three force and at one cut there will be three force one is axial force one is shear force and one is moment so total there will be six unknown force okay for this ring and how many equations we can write? We can write three equations. Summation of force equal to zero, summation of moment equal to zero, summation of force in X and Y equal to zero, and summation of moment about a point equal to zero. So these three equations we can write for that ring. We have six unknown forces in that ring. Six unknown forces are coming where okay at least we have to make two cuts to make it two body right and at one cut there will be three force okay 
and at another cut there will be another three force so for this system there are six unknown force and three equations of equilibrium therefore the degree of static indeterminacy becomes six minus three equal to three so the concept here is that if we have a ring type structure the degree of static indeterminacy will be three now using this concept we will carry forward into this type of structure so uh, suppose this is a frame okay so here we have column type beam and another column but these joints are fixed these joints are fixed now if the joints are fixed they cannot rotate they cannot go any deflection or displacement so it is kind of this is a continuous structure okay that is why this dotted line this dotted line is trying to mean that this frame is continuous over here because no change is occurring here so it is like a ring so whenever we will see a frame which are having supports as fixed so they are acting like a ring now we already know from this ring concept that if it is a ring type structure the degree of static indeterminacy is going to be three so we will use that concept and we will say that this degree of indeterminacy of this structure is three similarly if we have a double storage then three for this one and three for this one it is going to be six okay then for example this is a beam okay this is a beam one end is fixed here we have a roller support and here we have a roller support now what to do how to find out this quickly okay this may go on more also right another thing may be here another thing may be here if it gets complicated what to do we are looking for shortcuts so what we can do we can make ring type structure how we can make ring type structure if we are to make it ring type structure this support has to be fixed and this support has to be fixed then we can call it ring type structure here a ring and here another ring like this so now this is a roller support it can rotate and it can undergo horizontal displacement same here it can rotate and it can undergo horizontal displacement now if we want to make it fixed then what we have to do we have to add two unknown force initially there was only one unknown force here only one unknown force here right now if we want to make this joint as fixed and this joint also is fixed then what we have to do we have to add two unknown force we will be adding two unknown force by default by definition why because the fixed support cannot undergo any deflection displacement and rotation at the beginning it was a roller support the only thing it was preventing was downward deflection so therefore there was only one unknown force now when it is fixed it will be preventing the horizontal displacement and also the rotation if any so to prevent those two we have to add some restraining some reactions that we already know those reactions are going to be unknown force right so at this joint when we are making this joint fixed we are adding two unknown force when we are making this joint fixed we are adding another two unknown force but when these are fixed we can call this as a ring structure here and a ring structure here because between fixed and fixed we can consider it to be a ring structure because there is no changes occurring there okay, that is the concept so if it is a ring structure the degree of static indeterminacy of a ring will be three we have two rings so the degree of static indeterminacy is six but this is not a real structure what we have done we have added this force two plus two 
two here and two here. We have added four unknown cores which are not actually in the real structure. So the real degree of steady indeterminate minus four equal to two. Okay. So this way we can go on doing the calculations for complicated structure. In simple structure, we can directly get how many unknown and how many equations we can write. But if it gets complicated, if a number of bays or stories in our frames and beams, then we can use this shortcut. We will make the supports fixed and then we will see how many rings are there. Per ring, there is going to be three degree of static indeterminacy. Total degree of static indeterminacy that we found, we will subtract how many unknown forces we added to make the ring structures. That if we subtract, then we will get the degree of static indeterminacy of the real structure. Okay. So once again, I'll just go through once again. Pardon me here for the drawings. If we have a ring, the concept is that we are dividing it. If we make two cuts, at one cut, we are releasing three force. One is axial force, one is shear force, and one is moment. Okay. Now you may say that at one end, if this force is coming, at the other end, some more forces will be coming. But because they are at the same location, this force is exactly equal to this one. So they are not separate. Okay. So at one cut, therefore, even though it may seem there are six forces, there should be six forces, but in reality, it will be uh, three forces because these are exactly equal to these are. So at one cut, we will have three force, one axial force, one shear force, and one moment. Now to completely analyze it, to completely separate the free body diagrams, we have to make two cuts. We will have to make another cut here. And here also we will have three reactions, three unknown forces. So three plus three, it becomes six and how many equations we can write per frame, per beam, per this ring, that is summation of forces along x equal to zero, moment equal to zero about a certain point. So that means we can write three equations and the concept becomes that if it is a structure, we will have degree of static indeterminacy as six minus three equal to three. So whenever we find some structure which are complicated, we are not able to find out with this um, easily with our basic technique. What we may do, we will make it in ring structures, okay? So suppose we have something like this. Suppose we have something like this. We have roller support here. We have fixed uh, hinge support here. Okay. Now this one is easy. We can find it with our basic technique also. But if we want to do with that ring technique, what we should we have to do? The roller support we have one reaction. We know the hinge support. We will have two reactions that we know. We will convert it into ring structure. If we do that, we shall have to make the joints fixed. If we make the join fixed, then there will be one reaction added and one moment added. Here one moment will be added. Okay. So three unknown forces are added to make it fixed structure at both uh, support. Uh, if both supports are fixed, then we can call it kind of a ring. That means it has degree of static indeterminacy three, but this is not the original structure. In the original structure was something else like this. 
where we have added three unknown force to make it fixed or ring type structure. So the static indeterminacy of the ring type structure minus the forces they, that we added to make it ring type will give us the real degree of static indeterminacy. In this case, it is zero. It is a statically determinate system. Okay. After that, we have another concept. This is called kinematic indeterminacy. In kinematic indeterminacy, what we see, sorry, number of degrees of freedom in the structure. What is number of degrees of freedom in the structure? How many displacements may occur? Okay. Let's see here. Okay. Suppose this is a truss. Okay. This is a truss system. Suppose we have hinge joint at every joint. We have hinge support joint. Now, if we have hinge joint at every support, we already know that hinge supports will not allow any kind of deflection or displacement. It is not going down and it is not moving in the horizontal directions also. And those are the only two possible displacements in the truss system that we already know, right? So this means that in this entire system, what is happening, there is no allowance, there is no movement of the joints, okay? This joint is not moving, this joint is not moving, and this joint also not moving in this type of structure. If every joint is hinged, that means this is a kinematically determinate structure. Okay, that is the definition. Now, if the joint moves, we shall have to know the deflection or displacement of the joints to represent the deflected shape of the structure. Okay. And how many displacement we should know to describe the deflected shape of the structure? That means the degree of freedom and the degree of kinematic indeterminacy. For example, in this truss, okay, this joint, this joint does not have any support, so this joint can move in this direction due to the extension of this extension and contraction of these members and this joint may also move in this direct direction depending upon the extens extension and contraction of the truss members so here we have two possible displacement we have a hinge joint now in hinge joint we know that it is not going to move in any direction it is restrained in both the direction and here we have a roller joint. Now there we already know that it can move in this direction. So two displacements are allowed here and one displacement is allowed here. So total displacement is three. So we, if the truss system gets displaced or gets deflected under the application of external load, then two, express to describe the deflected shape of the truss system we have to know at least three displacement positions okay two here and one here so these three are degrees of freedom for this structure and that is also called kinematic indeterminacy so do not get confused static indeterminacy is a different concept Okay, how many unknown forces are there extra of the equations of static equilibrium that is static indeterminacy and kinematic indeterminacy is how many displacements may occur in the structural system. Then And in this in this truss, what is the kinematic indeterminacy? Okay. So the shortcut will be how many joints we have. We'll see that at every joint we know movement along x and movement along y. 
we have two displacement quantities that we already know. So degrees of freedom, if there are no restraint, okay, so unrestrained degrees of freedom will be two per joint and number of joint. So total is eight. And how many restraints we have? At the hinge joint, we have two reaction, that means two restraint. At the roller joint, we have one reaction, that means one restraint. So we have three restraint. If that we subtract, we will get what is the kinematic indeterminacy? What is the total degrees of freedom in this truss system? From where this file is coming? One, two, three, four, and five. So these five are the possible displacements that may occur in this truss system. Those five are degrees of freedom, and those five are kinematic and determinacy. Okay, okay, oh, this one I will discuss later.